Okay, so hi everybody. Um, so I'm going to give you just a little bit of information on myself about my background um, and how I came to sort of uh, into teaching um, and the route I've taken through my teaching career and, you know, how I ended up where I am now, which is obviously dealing with people who are training to teach. Um, so I didn't go straight to uni um, after school. I made a very bad choice not to do A-levels. Um, everybody pre-warned me that I'd be very bored. Um, but I was determined to go into the world of work, which I did. And while I enjoyed it for a couple of years, I soon, like everybody mentioned, would be, you know, was very bored. And so I was a bit of a late entrance then to uni um, because I had to go to college first, do an access to teaching. Uh, then I did my degree, which I did in sociology and social policy. Um, and then I went to work in a school in a pastoral capacity, so non-teaching role, and I worked with young people in key stage three and four who were at risk of exclusion. So while I really enjoyed that, um, again, I soon became a little bit bored um, and decided that actually it definitely was teaching I wanted to do. And I did a very vocational sort of route into teaching where I sort of trained on the job. Um, I worked with a university, but I didn't go back to university to sort of train. Um, I taught for many years. Um, I trained in social sciences. I taught for many years and I held different roles. So I, you know, I did classroom teacher. Um, and in that time, I taught some sociology, psychology. I taught a little bit of history, health and social care, child care. Um, I have been a curriculum leader, sort of head of department. Um, I have been assistant head of sixth form. Um, and then about six or seven years ago, I started working with trainee teachers. Um, and I'm now assistant director of Haybridge Alliance SKIT. So SKIT stands for School Centred Initial Teacher Training. So it's for those who want to train to teach, but don't necessarily want to go back to university properly um, to do it. So what I'm going to speak to you about sort of here today is the different routes into teaching that we offer. And then obviously I can ask, you know, I can answer anybody's questions that you might have. Um, but I'm going to go through a set PowerPoint. I might jump around a little bit. Um, but obviously, you know, if, if you've got any questions, pop them in the chat and I, I will sort of get round to them um, at the end. So as you can see from the PowerPoint, in terms of why teach, now you, you probably are thinking to yourself, well, why bother teaching? Teachers do get a bit of a bashing uh, on social media, especially with the recent strikes. But I can honestly, honestly say if I ask most of my friends, none of them are teachers, um, oh, you know, if you had your time again, if you could train to do something different, what would it be? And all of them would choose something different. But I can honestly, honestly say that I wouldn't make any different choices. I have always loved teaching. And I think that's because every day is different and you do genuinely get to make such a difference in people's lives. Now, that's not to say that, you know, um, I've, you know, touched the heart and soul of everybody I've taught. You know, I'm not that arrogant. Um, but there are some young people who still now I will bump into or will sort of email me out of the blue to let me know what they're doing. Um, and I don't know anybody who gets that level of satisfaction from their job. Um, and I think that's really important because you have to work for so many years and to be able to get up every day and not think, oh, work today. And to actually look forward to going in because you know that every day is going to be different. I think that's quite a priceless. Um, there's job security in teaching in the sense that if you want to teach for life, you will have a job for life. We will always need teachers. And I think COVID just sort of showed, showed us that. Um, because as much as, you know, parents and carers did a fabulous job of trying to sort of teach and entertain young people at home, it was difficult. And I think the one thing we have realised is that we will always need teachers in a classroom. Um, there's excellent career progression in teaching. So I'd only actually been teaching two years when I became assistant head of sixth form. So progression happened really quickly for me. Um, but that was because it, it was what I wanted. And I did have a strong pastoral background, whereas people I know um, who have taught, you know, for a similar amount of time than me, 
have never wanted to go into a pastoral role or a curriculum leader role or assistant headship because they're quite happy just teaching in the classroom. So there is career progression there if you want it, but you don't absolutely have to take it. And they've just sort of increased the starting salary. Um, so the starting salary is 28,000. And I'm sure you're aware, you know, unions are currently negotiating to see whether they can sort of get that increased. So it's not a bad starting salary. So, you know, lots of reasons as to why people might want to teach there. Okay, let's move on to the next slide for you. So I'm going to talk to you first about our undergraduate degree that we offer at Haybridge. So we have always traditionally um, offered postgraduate training. So those who have already been to university, who already have their degree, um, they do postgraduate training, but we now offer an undergraduate route um, only into primary teaching. But so those who have finished their A-levels or finished their BTECs, whatever pathway they're on, can come straight to us at 18 and they can do their three year degree with us. Um, but within the programme, they also get qualified teacher status and that's a three year programme. So anybody who wanted to sort of do a, a sort of normal degree, three years, and then do their teacher training on top, that would take them four years to train. And the bonus of the undergraduate that we offer is the whole thing is done and dusted within three years with very intensive sort of placements and practice and high levels of support. Uh, so that's the first thing to sort of note. Um, at the end of our three years, you do have your degree. That's a separate qualification on its own but you also have qualified teacher status as well. And we currently have year threes on the programme um, who are just starting to go to interviews and get jobs. So they joined us at 18, most of them. They're now sort of 21 or approaching 21. They're coming to the end of their uh, degree and their training, and they are more than ready to go into schools as qualified teachers. So in terms of how our course is sort of structured, um, each year sort of builds on another. So we have um, a set amount of modules per year, okay? Um, all in all, uh, students come to Haybridge for a day and a half per week, and that's for their structured learning, that's for the content of their degree, okay? And then they also spend two full days per week um, in a school undertaking their training. And they do that, they start that in September of year one. So straight away, right from the get go, you've got certain days at Haybridge doing the formal learning, and then you've got two days in a school. Um, and so obviously, you know, everything builds very, very slowly um, at the pace of the student. So students are in there, they might sort of act in a bit of a TA role to start with, as they get to know their school, they get to know the class teacher who is supporting them, they get to know their class, um, and then they sort of very gently sort of move then into um, teaching the young people, the pupils, they might start with small groups, they might do guided reading with them, so it builds very gradually, okay? Um, in terms of our sort of calendar, it's very clear, okay, that as a school centred provider, we are able to give QTS, we can award that ourselves, but we cannot give a degree. And so for that reason, we work really closely and we follow um, BCU timetable. So we work, we work really closely with them. They also offer the same um, programme, the same course. Um, but they do so obviously on a much larger scale. We do it on a much smaller scale. We teach the same modules, um, but obviously, you know, our staff do the training, our staff do the um, sort of delivery, we do the assessment, um, but it, it runs very much in line with the BCU timetable. So the course starts in September. You benefit from the half terms because obviously we are based in a school. So the staff who teach um, on the programme are all teachers. So, you know, they have half terms. 
you get additional time at Christmas, you get three weeks, the same for Easter, so you get slightly longer. That's more in line with BCU's uh, sort of university timetable. Um, and the year finishes in early June, so you do get that extended time in the summer like you would um, if you were at uni. So you get the benefits of being in a school in that you get the half terms, but then there are no drawbacks because you do still finish early. So you do get that additional bulk of time. You're not sort of finishing um, in July along with sort of teachers um, and, and school students. In terms of your school placements, you do three separate placements throughout your time with us. Um, so you have placement one in year one, placement two in year two, placement three in year three. So it's nice and simple, very straightforward. And um, we try very hard to place uh, students as close to home as possible. We are aware, obviously, that not everybody drives at that point. Um, and within those sort of three different placements, you do contrast in placement, so you will do at least one year in year in key stage one, you'll do at least another year in key stage two, and then you know your third placement will very much depend on what your preferred key stage is. Um, so by that point, you might be very well aware that actually you like the younger children, you like working with uh, key stage one, or you might actually think, well, actually, I think I'm a year five and six teacher. I really you know, enjoy teaching them when they've got a bit older and they know a little bit more. Um, so there's some flexibility there to specialise almost in your third and final year. In terms of the sort of benefits of the course, um, it's a very unique, we are only one of three providers in the country um, that have been given permission to offer this course, because like I explained earlier, we're not a university. Um, so, you know, not every um, school sort of led provider um, is in the privileged position of being able to offer this. Um, so, you know, if you want the big university experience, then this probably isn't the right programme for you. OK, um, you do get to you, you can if you want to go and make use of BCU facilities, you are in fact registered as a BCU student. So you can you can, you know, engage in Freshers Week, you can use their facilities, um, but you don't have to. That's the bonus. And that's, I think, where we're very unique. We are a very small cohort. So some people do thrive at university where they're sat in a sort of lecture hall with 200 of the students. That is what they want, um, but not everybody wants that. Not everybody is comfortable with that. And I think that's where our appeal is. We're, we're a very small cohort. We're a very personal provider. So I know all of our undergraduate students. I know who is getting married. I know whose dogs just died. I know whose sister's having a baby. Um, and as some of you might, you know, feel horror, um, but what it actually does is enable us to support our students really, really, you know, really well. Um, because over the course of three years, life happens. Sometimes you might feel a little bit fed up for no particular reason. There might come a time where you think, actually, I'm struggling a little bit with my school placement or I'm struggling a little bit with my studies. I fight with my friends. Um, and we are very good at saying, right, come on, sit down. Let's get the kettle on. Let's get the biscuits out. Um, how can we help? Um, and some, for some students, that sort of personal approach makes a difference between enjoying their time uh, of studying for their degree, or actually for some, it, it sort of makes a difference. Without that small provision, they potentially wouldn't actually be training to be a teacher. So I think that probably is our um, greatest benefit, okay? We are vocational. So again, um, like I've already sort of said, you are in school from day one and some people do learn better through doing. So you've got your taught sort of modules that contribute to your, you know, um, BIONS. Um, and actually you sort of can see it, you can see something in, in, in the lecture, you can learn about something, but then you can see it in practice the next day in your placement. And for some people that really brings the learning to life. Um, and, and so, you know, we, we call it the vocational route because it is very hands on um, and you do get so much experience, um, you know, three years in a school, um, two full days, 
you get to know a range of schools, you get to know teaching is a very small community, actually. Um, networks are really, really strong and really, really tight. Um, and so we already know of certain, you know, multi-academy trusts who do have their eye on our students. Um, so the first one to be employed in year three, they knew they wanted her in year one because I spoke to a mentor about it. And I think that's the, the sort of the, the bonus as well of being this vocational route where the employers out there know the level of training that you've actually had, the level of hands on experience. Um, but at the same time, it's very academic. Um, so you do get your degree. Um, we have been doing this for a few years now. We've had the benefit of being able to compare and contrast the results of our students to the students at BCU. Um, and, you know, achievement is in line. Um, <clears throat> and I think where we do also have a bonus is our, the, the sort of the specialists who deliver on the programme are all primary teachers. Um, and have very recently been in the classroom. In fact, two of them still work part-time in a primary school. So I think that's a, a sort of benefit that we've got over and above the university sometimes um, that our sort of trainers are also still in a school every week um, and are very sort of up to date in terms of, you know, what's happening in the classroom. Um, but we do work very closely with BCU and they do offer us, so, you know, if we've got any questions, um, then BCU are always there on hand um, to support us with that. Um, and you also get the benefits um, of BCU in terms of if there are anybody with uh, learning difficulties, such as dyslexia, for example, BCU have some excellent support packages out there. And as a BCU student, you are entitled to benefit from all of that. So it's almost like a win-win. You get the bonus of all the sort of uh, facilities um, and the procedures that a university has, all that level of support, but then and you obviously get the benefit of a small cohort that feels very personal. In terms of our primary sort of team, um, the team at Haybridge is quite large, but there are three members of staff that are solely focused on primary. They are primary practitioners. So Kate Brown, um, and many of you may know, um, you may know her as Mrs. Brown because Kate came from Hadley Primary School um, and she's our primary lead. We've got Dan Bate. He is also currently working at um, Hagley Primary School as well. He's coming to us full time um, in May. Um, and we have Katie Pritchard, who is a primary teacher um, also in Worcester. <clears throat> They're all NLEs um, and they've all been, they've all held sort of senior leadership positions um, within the sort of the primary schools that they were involved with. So those are our three main uh, lecturers. We do obviously bring in guest lecturers um, and other primary specialists just to keep it a little bit interesting, just to mix it up a little bit for you. Um, but we have a really strong primary team behind us. In terms of assessment, you'll be very pleased to know there are no exams. There are written assignments, there are presentations, there are case studies, there is a dissertation and research project, project in the final year, um, but there are no formal exams, just assignments. So that's always a bonus. Um, in terms of uh, the modules that are sort of delivered in the first year, we have five. Um, and you'll be pleased to know also they only ever run one at a time. So you will study the emerging teacher um, and you'll do that for five or six weeks and then you'll do your assessment. Um, following the completion of that, you move on to the developing child. And again, it runs in the same format. The only one that you study at the same time is core subjects. And that is the half day. So you'll have a the start of the year in September, you'll have a full day on the emerging teacher, you'll have a half day on core subjects, and then um, you only do your sort of assessment for core subjects at the end of the year. So you've only ever got one assignment to be working on at a time. Um, and we obviously deliver it like that. We design it like that because we take into account the fact that you are also on your school placement. OK, so it, it's very manageable in terms of the workload in that sense. Um, 
Du, du, du. In terms of the school placement, now that's assessed a little bit differently. Um, and the mentor that you are working with, your class teacher, they will provide feedback um, to the SKIT team as we go through the year. Um, and gradually throughout the three years, you build up an evidence portfolio, you complete reflective journals. So everything you need to gather together in order to be awarded your QTS, you do very gradually over the three years. Um, and you're also sort of uh, judged on professionalism. So do you attend your placements on time? Um, is the language, is the way you speak to the young people in your care appropriate for a teacher? Um, so that's done very gradually over the three years. Um, but every year there is an assessment whereby your mentor, uh, who will be your class teacher, will have to say yes. And um, they successfully passed their school placement. And the school placement is considered your sort of final module, if you like. In terms of sort of feedback from students that we've currently got, um, they, they generally have said that they've really, really enjoyed um, being in such a, such a small cohort. They've really gotten to know each other. They've really sort of made friends. Um, they can speak to each other about their experiences. Um, and they've had this sort of bonus of sort of making those links while also being able to sort of stay at home and, and sort of benefit from that. Um, and yeah, I think the friends for life is, is what sort of really made me smile. Um, because what you'll find is the older you sort of get, by the time you get to my age, put it that way, um, there'll probably be very few people from school that you are still in contact with, but generally the people you do meet at uni are the sort of friends that tend to stay in your life. And so the closeness of all three of our cohorts is really, really pleasing. The other thing um, that the students have tended to like is the mix of ages. So the majority of people on the programme are like you guys, straight from school, they're 18. But actually, then you also get a handful of teaching assistants, for example, who have worked in school for a few years. They're desperate to be teachers, but they need to study for their degree um, before they can do that. Um, so we do get some sort of older students as well. And that balance between young and old is really lovely. Um, so, you know, our, our younger students tend to say um, there's older people on the programme that they, they look almost up to like mother figures or father figures. And then our older students absolutely love the enthusiasm um, and the energy that they get from the younger trainees. So it does work beautifully. In terms of why you might choose us, like I said, I'm not going to sort of, um, I'm not going to lie, like I said, and it is really important um, if you want the big university experience, you're not going to get that properly with us. OK, however, if you want the best of both worlds, then you can access that. But if you did just want a smaller provider who is going to look after you, um, then we are definitely worth a second look. Um, so, you know, all of our students have provided positive feedback. They all they are all very happy. We have team building days. We have um, celebrations, enrichment days. We've got sort of good location in terms of our placements. Um, and I, I think the support that we offer is, is second to none, to be honest. But then I suppose I am biased. Um, in terms of how you you apply to us, you apply to us on UCAS like you would any other provider and there's some information on there about our institution codes and our course code. Um, in terms of points, it's 112 UCAS points. However, um, if there are, there have been occasions in the past where students haven't quite got 112 and we have been able to make exceptions to that. Um, so obviously in an ideal world, People who, you know, um, want to attend with us do need the 112. But if it does fall slightly, that may take some pressure off. Um, if it falls too much, there's nothing we can do. Um, but a slight fall, you know, we are aware that, you know, anything can happen. You're particularly poorly on the day that you've got a certain exam or something happens. Hay fever was my biggest bugbear when I was doing my GCSEs. I was never quite 
on the ball or alert enough because I was absolutely riddled with sneezing and sniffing and coughing. Um, so we do know that there are a range of things that can affect performance and we are in the sort of lucky position really where we can take that into account. In terms of finance, um, in terms of our fees, it's the same as studying with BCU or any, any other university for that matter. You can still get tuition fee loans and maintenance loans. You apply through student finance again, like you would um, with any sort of um, other university, any other provider. And in terms of sort of specific questions, you can ask me what questions you might have now it may be that somebody has a question i'm not sure of the answer to but there are sort of contact details on there for our primary lead and if you've got any questions about the application process angela barker who is the administrator who is in charge of our ucas system would also um, be able to answer those for you if i can't answer them today um, so, you know, before I sort of move on to start talking to those who perhaps do want to teach or they want to teach in secondary or they want to teach primary, but they don't necessarily want to do an undergraduate degree that includes QTS. I'll talk to you, sort of talk, talk, do a, a, a sort of talk for you guys in a moment. But has anybody got any questions for me? Well, students, I'd encourage you to type in the chat if you have any questions, but we did have some pre-asked questions. So whilst we're waiting for those, any additional ones, may I ask you, Tracy, um, regarding what you've spoken about, which is super, it's a great opportunity and alternative for many students who are looking for a different sort of experience. Yeah. I think that hybrid version. Um, one question that we had was uh, a student who wanted to go into special educational needs yeah. teaching. I'm wondering how this programme and this uh, with the Hay Bridge Alliance might fit in, particularly with uh, special educational needs. Well, I think the key thing is there is no set teacher training for those who want to teach in a specialist institution you do just generally train to be a primary school teacher or a secondary school teacher and you specialize afterwards but all of our students do get we do offer a postgraduate training with a focus on SEND so all of our students benefit from the additionality of those sessions and we can always arrange a placement in a special school particularly in year three where all the knowledge is coming together for those who do have a special interest um, and I think again it comes back to us being a smaller provider we can make those arrangements because we don't have 200 students to look after um, so yeah it, it is possible to do some extended time in a special school that's really helpful thank you very much we've just had a question come in from Hayden is there anything similar available in secondary teaching do you know no there is but we don't offer it but there is in certain subjects so I can only really speak for BCU um, so if you wanted sort of wider than that you would need to do some research because I'm absolutely sure that there will be plenty of providers and they tend to be in key subjects so you might find sort of PE the sciences you know biology physics chemistry um, so yes, it is available. The option is there, but unfortunately, it's not something we offer. Um, but yes, it is something you can definitely look at. Sorry. However, it's also worth considering that for subjects like chemistry or biology or physics, if you do a normal degree um, and sort of get your qualification and then do a postgrad course, the postgrad course in those subjects attracts a bursary, quite a healthy bursary. So it may be instead of doing the three year programme, you actually get a normal degree that's not just focus on teaching. It's a little bit broader. Yes, it takes you that extra year, but in that extra year you are earning. Sometimes it's up to £27,000 tax free. Um, so actually, it, you, you end up earning even more than what you would do as a first year teacher. So that's obviously something to also consider with secondary bursary availability. 
Thank you, Tracy. That's actually a really important thing that there are additional support. Um, yes. thing. And also, um, we do have uh, the local Star Vale Academy Trust and things as well. So I'd encourage any students who are inquiring about that, perhaps to come and have an yes. appointment or come in and talk to uh, us here in careers in uh, DD 0.07 and just come and talk to us about that or make a one to one appointment because we can actually kind of give you some more information on that. Um, a question here from a student saying, I have an offer to come to you in September, which is really nice. Yeah. However, I had a question about your partnership with BCU. As you're partnered with them, could a student undertake their study abroad for a semester while studying with you? And actually, that was one of the pre-asked questions. So it's really helpful. Yeah, it's not something we offer now. Um, and I think you'll find that this particular I know um, lots of students do enjoy those sort of sandwich placements where they get to go and study abroad. That would be a normal degree. So I think if that's something you're really interested in, it is really important that you consider doing that. Um, but because this programme with us and the same one that's offered with BCU, because obviously you're in and out of schools and, you know, they have to be UK schools. Um, so no, that sort of placement option isn't available with this type of course. That's grand, thank you. And another uh, student has asked, how many students are usually in a class? Um, um, it very much sort of varies. So our current year, th our current year, th uh, put my teeth back in. Our current sort of third years, um, there are only nine in that class. But then if you move on to sort of year two, there's about seventeen, um, and there's a similar number in year one. Um, we have always said we wouldn't go above 20 um, because we do like that personalised nature. So, uh, you know, about 17 at the moment, but it really wouldn't go above 20. That's brilliant. Thank you. And uh, Faye's putting some uh, some contact details and some links uh, within the uh, chat function for you as well. So hopefully students together with the presentation from Tracy and the information she's given you and is going to just go on to give you together with those that Faye's providing, hopefully you will have you know, as much as you need at the moment, but certainly come and have a careers appointment with myself or Faye uh, to discuss your individual cases. Please go on putting things in the chat, those students. And I'll just ask another couple of questions that came through, yeah. if I may, Tracy. Um, do you hold an offer holder day like other universities or something where students could come and talk to you sort of a bit more personally and see the surroundings and how it works? Yes, we do. So we do do open day and we do open evenings we've got an event coming up um please don't ask me the dates if you email angela she will be able to share that with you uh where yes all of our trainees and students get together it's it's by easter time and you can meet the rest of the cohort you can ask any questions you might have and it's generally just almost the start of our team building uh where you just start gently getting to know each other so actually starting in september is not so daunting that's brilliant. And I think I would encourage students who are interested, even if you just have a passing interest in this, um, to actually go along to one of those. Because I think um, as we have started to get to know staff um, from from Haybridge Alliance, you know, we've realised that there are very particular students who actually wouldn't know anything about this unless they spoke to you. But actually, it's really encouraged a lot of students to go and find out more detail. Yeah. Um, and, and actually, you know, it's very encouraging to go, I think, and see uh, students from previous cohorts as well and have a chat with them and see how the programme is going and the pros and cons. And you can weigh that up, you know, uh, individually. Um, we do, we do, sorry, we do welcome parents and carers to attend. That's so obviously true. some young people want to go by themselves, but plenty do bring parents and carers because obviously it's really important that they're happy um, with what their young people are choosing as well. So if somebody's parents do want to go with them, they certainly won't stand out. That's excellent. Thank you. Uh, and um, 
a question about work experience in a primary school. We've been working with students on the uh, teaching pathway um, to help them support them in gaining some placements. We've just come to a bit of a full stop now because we're up to a maximum of where we can filter those through to uh, within the programme that we've had available, but we'll always be helping students. Have you got any sort of hints and tips on how to get uh, work experience in, in perhaps in one of the schools that you're associated with? It is sort of really difficult in terms of obviously trying to get um, young people into schools. Um, but you mean hints and tips in terms of access in a school? Yes, trying to get really, I guess, a, a placement and how they should approach maybe a school. I think um, if you're doing it through school, it obviously always helps to have the support of your school. Um, and I think, but generally, if you want to go and spend a day in a school just to get a feel for it, um, a nice, independent, politely written email to the head teacher goes a long way. Head teachers love initiative, especially in the primary schools. Um, and if you are really, really struggling and you are really interested, um, you could always sort of contact us at Haybridge and if we can help you, we will. Um, but obviously, you know, our focus is on putting the students and the trainees in school. Um, but yeah, we can always help you with that. But in terms of hints and tips, I think sometimes it's picking the time as well. Um, so perhaps I wouldn't email right before the end of a term because head teachers, well, everybody tends to be really grumpy, really short tempered. Um, but at the start of a term, people are a little bit fresher and are probably more inclined. Um, you know, key times by Christmas, you won't see a great deal in a primary school because it's very focused on, you know, the celebration of Christmas and getting students ready for that. Um, I would steer clear of May time because, you know, especially if you want to go into year five and six because of SATs. So I think I would just go for the start of each term. Lovely. And certainly in, in uh, KE careers, we're able to help students try and source placements. So if anybody has those queries, then please do come and see us. Uh, Jane Edwards is our um, kind of a work experience coordinator and we'll, we'll always try and help students. So I think, uh, try, try, sorry, one, one more thing. Sorry, I think the key thing is to say whatever provider you are going for, they won't expect you to have experience. So it's lovely if you can get some because then you're sure of your decision, but you really shouldn't worry if it's not something you can arrange. It certainly won't disadvantage you. Thank you. That's very helpful. And um, perhaps, Tracy, you might like to just talk a little bit more generally then about the alternative routes, obviously, okay. um, if you would do that. that would be <laughs> helpful. Thank you. Lovely. So the alternative routes then are for um, people. So you might sort of think to yourself, uh, well, I think I want to go into teaching, but I'm not 100 percent sure yet. Um, then you would probably want to just do a normal degree. So if you wanted to um, perhaps teach primary, um, you're thinking about it one day, it wouldn't matter what degree you do, you can sort of do your degree in whatever sort of takes your interest and you will be able to apply for, to, you know, to be a primary school teacher on a postgraduate route at the end of your degree if you wanted to. And like, like I said myself, I did two years in a school after finishing my degree before I did my training. So there can be a gap after you finish your degree, you might want to go traveling, you know, the world is your oyster. If you want to teach secondary, however, you do have to put a little bit more thought into what you're studying. Um, so it, it can get quite complicated in the sense that let's pretend you want to be a history teacher. Um, in an ideal world, at least 50 percent of your degree will be in history. OK, but say for argument's sake, you've done a history A level, you've done really well in that. You go and do English as a degree. And then afterwards, you think, actually, I do want to teach, but I've decided I, it is actually history I want to teach. Many providers, not all of them, but many providers will enable you to train in history because you've got that A level in history. Um, but if you don't have the A levels, your degree needs to be at least 50% in what you want to teach. So that might sort of, you know, involve a little bit more thought. Um, and you might just have to sort of play on the safe side. Well, I may want to teach French or I may want to teach English. Therefore, that's definitely going to form at least part of my degree to make sure that that option is available to me when the time comes. 
Um, so be it primary or secondary, if you choose the postgraduate route, you do your three year degree and then you make a decision whether you want to train to teach afterwards. Um, if you want to do it straight away, you would apply for your teacher training um, provider in the third year of your degree and there are so many providers out there we are certainly not the only provider who is a skit you've got a skit in starport you've got um, a couple of skits in birmingham you've got lots of sort of providers locally who who sort of um offer school direct routes where they work in co in combination you know with various universities um, and they will put you in placements in their local schools um, so that's more the hands on again route into teaching where you would be straight in a school from day one. Um, but there is also a more traditional route into teaching whereby you do a traditional PGCE where you might spend a few weeks in uni learning the art of teaching and then you go out into placement on a, in, in a school. Um, you do a few weeks in placement, then you go back to the uni, you do a little bit more learning, and then you go out on a second placement. So that is very much the traditional university route into teaching versus the very hands-on route that you would get with a skit um, or a school direct route. And that's because with that route, you spend one day a week learning the art of teaching, but you put it straight into practice afterwards. So four days in school, one day um, in uni. So like the taught material is almost drip fed through the year. So you do a little bit, you put it into practice, you do a little bit, you put it into practice. Whereas that traditional route, you learn quite a lot and then you put it into practice. And I think very much there is, you know, absolutely no preference from employers for you know one route or another it's very much what you want to do as a learner how you learn really and what suits you better that's excellent thank you tracy that's super and um Faye's put in the chat there the school direct and uh, information as well at vcu so i think um across the different routes there's actually quite a number of different ways that students can go into teaching and that's what yes. I think certainly in the last few years that's been very much extended and I think yes. different ways suit different people so I would encourage all students to have a look at all of those different ways into teaching we will send out the uh, the powerpoint if Tracy will send that to us because I think there's a lot of information in there about the options and hopefully students can see um, also through the links that Faye's put on there that there are actually there's a lot of information about this but there's no better way than coming and speaking to you so I really would encourage we'll we'll actually when we send the material out we'll find your open um times out and we'll we'll pop those in as well so that uh, students haven't even got to scrabble around for those brilliant brilliant um uh, students if there aren't any further questions um then uh, unless Tracy has anything else to add to that um, I don't so no, that's wonderful. Um, there's a lot of information there. It's been very, very interesting. Um, and Haybridge is obviously on our doorstep, but a lot of our students come from uh, quite a, a, a distance. Yeah. So there might be students on here from Wolverhampton, from uh, Droitwich. So there will be quite a, a number of geographical issues that may actually um, prevent students from taking that up. But I would encourage all students to come and have a look anyway at one of your open evenings just to get a flavour of the options that are available. That's wonderful. Well, thank That's you for having me tonight. Thank you very much indeed, Tracy. And if we have any further questions that come into careers at keds.ac.uk from any of our students, if that's all right, we'll forward them to you, Tracy, and we can uh, uh, get those asked. And also, I would encourage any student that is not on the teaching pathways here at KE to uh, sign up to the teams and we'll add you to that. And then you can gain some information. Come and have a one to one with Faye or myself and certainly have a look on the uh, MS Teams and the Padlet for any work experience or related materials to teaching. Thank you very much indeed for coming along, Tracy, and we hope students have enjoyed that and we look forward to seeing you on our next one. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. And you too. Thank you, Tracy. Bye bye. Bye bye.